Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and I've returned! We're playing Rule the Waves 3, if you just joined us. And we're playing as Italy in this Let's Play series. We just started a war with Austria-Hungary. So, we'll see how that war goes. I'm a little nervous they might blockade me. I think my goal in this war has to be to take Dalmatia, because they don't really have anything else that we can take. We did take Albania in an event uh, an hour or so ago in the game. Um, but if we're looking at expanding Italy further, um, a fairly valuable province and also historically an area that Italy wanted, although it certainly isn't this map. It's like just really along in here. It doesn't curve out like this. I don't, I don't understand this part of the map. Um, is uh, the Dalmatian coast, which the Italians historically wanted. Does So this has Spelto, Cato, and Zara. Spelto, Zara, and Cato. So it doesn't include Flume or Polo, which I'm assuming are here. Yeah. Okay, so we're at war. We haven't fought any battles yet. It's the first month of the war. We're on the verge of the Dreadnought era. We have a fairly large fleet, I feel like. We have a very large naval budget, which I'm a little nervous about because that might make people mad and spur a revolution. But yeah. Anyway, uh, we have just started the war, so we got to figure out what we're going to do with our shipping. If we take a look at the Almanac here. The Austro-Hungarians have 11 battleships in service. We have seven, so they have an edge there in terms of ships, but tonnage is actually much closer we looked at their battleships, and about half of them are from pre-1900, so it's a pretty old battle fleet. We only have two ships that are pre-1900. Um, if we take a look at the armored cruiser situation, they have 14, we have 9. We actually have a tonnage advantage. We tend to build bigger rather than more in terms of mass, um, so that I think is a nice situation to have. We have 10 armored, we have 10 light cruisers, and they only have 4. We only have four light cruisers. So you know what that means we're going to do here? We are going to send our cushions, at least some of them. Uh, the 1900s will send on, well, one of these guys is foreign station, right? Who is there another ship that's set to foreign station? No one is. Okay, well, whatever. All right, these other cushions, these two 1900 ones, we're going to go ahead and set to raiders. Oh, not radars. Raiders. Okay. We'll also send two of these newer ones. So we're going to send five of our light cruisers off into uh, raider status. And then we're going to send two of our Palistro class armored cruisers as out as raiders as well. We have a fair number of ships that are also in rebuilds right now. So we've got four new construction Marcus Aurelius class armored cruisers, two Caesar class battleships. Those are all the ways out. But we do have quite a few ships that are rebuilding. Some Palistro classes as well will be done in the next month. So let's see what the war uh, has in store for us. We've got our trade protection up to 12 out of 12. The Austrians have a few, not, although not a ton, of submarines. All right, Austrian ship intercepts Italian raider Palistro in the Mediterranean. Let's fight that battle. Let's see what the Austrians are intercepting us with. Maybe we can get an early single ship victory. And maybe not. All right, Palistro is making 12 knots because that's what they always make when you start a battle like this. All right, ship spotted, sir. Max minus two. Palistro's max speed apparently is 21 knots. That's a stair class armored cruiser. So we're closing range with them. Let's pause here real quick. So the opening salvos are out. No hits on us yet. Looks like we fired four rounds, four shells. The enemy ship... Seems to be, it's a 1900 era ship, but only has two main guns of eight inches and 10 sixers. So it's got 10 sixers and casemates, which is not a bad armament. 
The Belt Armor 5 is pretty solid to withstand shells of our calibers. We only have 8-inch caliber guns. I don't even know if they can penetrate those, at least unless we get inside like 1,000 yards. We have 10 fives, so they have what? They have sixes. How many of them? 10 sixes. So they have a, they have a tonnage advantage and a, gun, and a caliber advantage there, but we also have 12 threes. So you could set a lot of fires and other things like that to maybe disable it. And we have two torpedo tubes, although they probably do too. All right, so let's go. We're making squadron max minus two for more accurate gunnery. We also did upgrade our guns on our ships to have better fire control. So we'll see if that plays a factor here. We could see at least one hit there. But the enemy, we're on fire, aren't we? Let's pause. So we're on fire. A lot of structure damage, a lot of flotation damage. We've taken 16 medium hits. We have scored 15. So we are dishing out some punishment too. Let's cut in behind them. Slow the speed a little bit to maybe help. I don't know if slowing the speed helps firefighting, but I'm going to pretend it does. Okay. Let's pause again. She's 9,100 tons, 5-inch belt. She's doing a lot better than I thought she would against me. We are up to 28 or 22 hits on us. We have scored no more additional hits of our own. It may be time. It looks like one of our turrets is out of action, too. It may be time to withdraw. Actually, real quick. Which turret is out of action on us? The rear turret. Okay, great. It would seem the six inch shells played a fairly decisive role in this fight. This is the 1900 police turret, right? Or no, it says 1904. Looks like that turret is back in action. I don't know if the enemy's retreating or just doesn't want to fight anymore, but looks like this will be an inconclusive fight. Austria Hunger gets the victory. Heavy damage for us, light damage for them. Something we'll have to keep an eye on. No! He's forced to scuttle, damn it. So the enemy somehow doesn't get credit for a major victory, even though we had to scuttle. That's one of the weird things about the way that some of this stuff works in this game. All right, so we sank 10 enemy merchants with our raiders, 50 victory points for that. Our ally Russia sends a message that they're not ready to join the war against Austria-Hungary at this time, which we answer with them. I guess they'll find their courage if we give them some time. We should demand that they honor their alliance. Perhaps they could offer some economic or material help. They'll find their courage in time. I don't want to end the alliance now. All right, so construction situation, not great. Let's pause these. Uh, I don't want to pause the battleships, actually. Let's pause these armored cruisers just for a month. All right, a cruiser action in the Adriatic. Let's fight. We're just going to see a lot of these battles, probably. This game really over-indexes on how many fleet actions there were. All right, we've got three armored cruisers of the... Well, two of them are probably of the Romeo class. Four nine-inch guns. Romeo, Romeo. Romeo. Three Romeo class armored cruisers. A light cruiser... Of the Kushin class, as you would expect, and then a flotilla of destroyers. So let's see what it, uh, is in store for us. Unknown ship spotted. All right. There's a cruiser action, so there's no objectives here other than to fight. All right, our light cruisers and cruisers can make a max speed of 22 knots each, so we'll do squadron minus two to give better gunnery, and the destroyers will move in under AI control, and we'll close and see what the enemy is uh, is up to.
really have a battleship here? Because that would not be fun. Nope, armored cruiser of the stair class. Three armored cruisers as far as I can tell. Some light cruisers and destroyers. We're just charging straight ahead. Another enemy unknown ship out to the west. Or are we sailing between two task forces? Dear God. All right, so I just sailed, and there are two groups, and they're heading opposite directions. How much, what can the, oh my God, what, what's the speed of their ships here? 20 knots in the Maros. The stair makes 20 knots as well. Looks like one CL, maybe three armored cruisers. All right, let's do this. Let's take manual control of our destroyers. Squadron max, sail into them, boys. I'm going to get my destroyer sunk, but I'm okay with that. I don't really care if my destroyers get sunk as long as I put some fish into enemy heavy ships. I don't expect you to survive. I expect you to die, Nimbo. Let's go max speed to catch up with these guys because we are faster than them. Temperamental engines. That's right. We did design our destroyers um, on the cheap. At least with their engines. Right, close on the Maros class armored cruiser. It doesn't seem like it can keep up with the rest of their ships. Remember, I have destroyers in the wings of replacements coming online. So if we can get these guys, that would be great. Lampo's breaking off. No torpedoes firing. Great. Hey, there was a torpedo fired by the arrow. Too bad it missed. All right, the enemies are retreating for their port, which is not going to be great if we don't sink any of them. All right, we just lost one of our destroyers. I don't care. Go for the Maros. Can't control you guys directly? Why not? Oh, there we go. Wait. Why can you only make three knots? You're the only ship in your... What? Why can't I control those guys directly? All right, Maros is breaking south. I don't know if chasing into the Dalmatian coast is a smart idea, but we can chase south of it. Monolith, it's you! It is. You're probably sinking. Yep, you are. Sorry, Monolith. Don't worry, though. The class named after you will survive. I 
right, let's get the goddamn cruiser. All right, she looks like she's dead in the water. Monolith will never die. All right, there's a crew, uh, torpedo off by the dog gull it missed. But our destroyers just fired some fish. Also, they missed, apparently. Oh, don't collide. All right, so the Maros seems to be dead in the water. Then we'll want to send light cruisers out to support. I'm okay with that. Right, Maros is hit by a torpedo, so I'm assuming she's a goner. We'll leave her be for the time being. Some armored cruisers down here, although night is falling, so maybe this is dumb. Enemy ships hit by another torpedo. So it wasn't... I mean, the enemy kind of just ran for me, although I think while well, we did lose a few destroyers or at least one, you know, if we sink an enemy armored cruiser for the loss of a few destroyers, I'm pretty sure the game is going to count that as a, as a victory, probably even a major victory, but we'll see. All right, send those guys into port. Okay, the scenario is over. Italy is the victor. The Italians lost one destroyer sunk. It was the monolith. The Austro-Hungarians lost one armored cruiser sunk. Definitely a good trade. Minor victory, though, in terms of victory points. And we're blockaded. All right, we can research destroyers up to 600 tons in displacement. The enemy dominates the sea around Albania. Really, though, do they? Uh, we lost one enemy submarine was sunk, seven enemy operational, no friendly merchants sunk. Hell yeah, brother. Good job on the ASW work. And then the enemy lost seven merchants to our trade warfare. So we sank one of theirs, but we're blockaded. Okay, we'll hold one of the battleships for a month. Index here. So they've got 11 battleships. We have seven. Tonnage should favor us, though. Although some of our ships are being rebuilt. Some of our heavy ships, too. Although, no, those are all those are all done, aren't they? Um, hmm. So how does it factor that, then? Is it because I've got ships set to rating? Blockade strength is 165. It must be 110 my enemy's my strength. Where does it say what my strength is? Is it this? The 130? That seems low. I don't I wish I understood how the game calculated strength. But we'll just have to keep fighting them and break the blockade, I guess. All right, the cushion's being intercepted. We'll see what they intercepted with. Remember, the cushion got their better five-inch guns now. Okay, are they just running away from me? Yep, we got them. We spotted them. They are trying to run away, though. wonder if we're faster. Stern chase is a long chase. Oh, but there's two of them. Is it really an armored cruiser? Seriously? Two armored cruisers? Charge! You're gonna die, Kuchin. Oh, 
The St. George class is broken. Well, now we're stuck between them, huh? Are we near any ports? Not close enough, I don't think. My only chance would be to close to torpedo range. Well, let's try and get away. My upgraded 5-inch guns aren't going to fare well against enemy armor. And my crews are not experienced enough to have an advantage here. And we're not close enough. Sail away with me. Oh my God, there's two armored cruisers versus a light. That's that's cool. Cushion sinking. As you would expect. Uh, the army wants more resources. Sure. Launch an offensive. We lost a light cruiser to an enemy torpedo. That's great. One merchant lost to an enemy torpedo. We lost... Well, we sank Tenton, though, with our merchants. Cruiser battle. Hey, the blockade looks like it broke, though. Marco Polo, two light cruisers, and some destroyers. What is this, by the way? Police chart class, okay. Well, let's see what they've got. Come sail away with me into the ocean. All right, so they've got a fair number of ships. What's the makeup here? We're claiming battleships, but rarely is that accurate when you first see an enemy ship on the horizon. All right, so what we can see, two armored cruisers for sure. Two light cruisers and maybe a third heavy ship up here. Oh my God, there's another line of ships. The nice thing with Albania being on our side is we have a lot of directions to run. We only have one armored cruiser. What am I supposed to do with that? I mean, I guess I could send my destroyers in there to try and torpedo them. Pause. All right. Are these of the uh, monolith class? They are. Well, boys, your time has come. It is time to make maximum revolutions and charge into the enemy fleet. Don't worry, you have not been their main target yet. Go get the enemy armored cruisers. This day will be a proud one. Why are you doing that? You misread my orders or you just decided you didn't want to die? Which one? Hey, one torpedo's away. Didn't hit anything, but I saw it get shot. Two destroyers, one of theirs, one of ours collide. One of ours is hit by a torpedo. One of ours is sinking. Well, that didn't go over well. <laughs> Pretty sure that whole flotilla is dead. Maybe we sank their destroyer who we collided with. Yeah, Strel's going to die, too. Okay, well, everybody died. They're all dead! They bought time for my cruisers to get out ahead, though, and escape. 
If that's what we had decided to do, it is not. You can go to wherever. You can get out of there, destroyer. You're too slow to matter now. I'm kind of bummed that we uh, didn't... So the Steyr class, their armor is too problematic. I think my armor is just as good, but... That was a underwhelming charge by my destroyers. Kind of bummed. Unless we can figure out a way to overcome those losses and sink some enemy destroyers, we lost for sure. I had hoped that my fire control tech was more advanced than theirs and that that would have played a major role in us winning some battles, but it doesn't seem like it was. Oh god. I heard a torpedo as went by that Uski class. We did get one of their destroyers, at least. Let's get the Sadia, our light cruisers. She's in trouble. How is the Marco Polo doing? How, how much damage? One, six medium hits. That's not too bad yet. Let's try and get their medium ships here. Make up for the submarine that destroyed our light cruiser. They have fewer light cruisers than us too, I think. Our own cruisers are taking a bit of damage, though. It is almost nightfall. That should help. Right, she's dead in the water, which I'm assuming means sinking. The Kotit just fired a torpedo at her. And it missed. All right, let's get away from her. She's presumably going to sink. And Nightfall has made visibility non-existent. The enemy must have turned in another direction. One of our destroyers escaped. The rest died. All right, Italy wins that battle. Nice. Okay, so we did lose two destroyers sunk, one survived. They lost a light cruiser and a destroyer, so that nets out to our advantage. Okay. Another minor victory, though. Meanwhile, we're no longer blockaded, so that's good. And we also got two new, uh, two new destroyers commissioned into our Navy. The enemy fleet dominates the seas around Albania. Yay, we sank an enemy sub. Okay. So they're down to four operational subs. We've lost three merchants this turn. They lose four. We're building more monoliths. It's okay, J Street. We're not we're not running out of them. Um, see, we've got what ten more, or whatever it is. They'll be ready in a month. All right. I forgot I gave money to the army. So it kind of screwed up my building program a little bit. Well, this is one of those really big battles where we've got a chance to change the strategic picture with a decisive victory. But that'll be for another time. It's a rather long battle, and based on where we are here, I don't think it'll be wrapped up within 30 minutes. So we're going to wrap this episode up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts below. And we will continue our Rule the Waves series in our next episode. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.